Okay, so you maybe you have an EG4 3000 and you wanted to get Solar Assistant to work rather than the included DB25 to Wi-Fi dongle and the manufacturer's app. Um, and actually this first 30 seconds might be useful to other inverters as well. So what I did and what you may have done is bought a Raspberry Pi from Solar Assistant and you have a RJ45 port for your RS-232 that you need to plug into and you don't want to use the included uh, DB9 to RJ45 that came with the dongle. So whatever you do, don't just plug that USB port into the Raspberry Pi. Actually that part's fine. Don't plug it into the RJ45 port because a lot of those are console cables and they have different applications. Uh, to my surprise, and that cable you see in there is my second uh, USB RS-232 cable because I melted the first one like Chernobyl in 30 seconds. Um, the pinouts don't match up. Uh, to my surprise, RS-232 standard, which back in the day when I used to do a lot of programming with it, was pretty standardized. All the 9-pin connectors and you know various connectors had a standardized pinout that was specified by the RS-232 protocol, if you will. Apparently RJ45 was never part of that protocol and so they allow the manufacturers to come up with their own pinout. So it's a proprietary pinout and ground maps to uh, the voltage on that particular device and it melted the RS-232 device, ruined the port on that Raspberry Pi. Luckily it doesn't appear to have done any damage to the inverter. So when that happened I had to do some more research here and that's when I learned this. So don't just plug it all in. Pretty simple though. Um, apparently another change that I'm not familiar with over the years that happened is that now you just need the uh, receive, the transmit, and the ground pin. Those three. That's it. The dongle uses the fourth one, that voltage, to power it, but uh, for these little tiny devices here, they already have their own power from the uh, Raspberry Pi and you're just communi you're doing communication, so don't need that uh, extra power source. And right here you can uh, see a quick demonstration of how uh, responsive the solar, uh, solar Assistant app is. You can see just as crude as I'm doing this with basically ripping apart a couple cables, old cables, and touch and release one of the pins. Like, uh, I don't know if that's the receiver or the transmit pin, but the app immediately recognizes it and reconvenes the connection and the communication just as soon as you connect or disconnect the pins. It's uh, pretty impressive. but I was just doing this to make sure that I was on the right track with the uh, the correct pins before I start making a nice pretty cable which is up next. So with some tools, just some clippers, I use a little uh, a scalpel type knife um, to basically remove the sheath off of the RS, or I'm sorry, the, uh, I don't even know what, the flat ribbon eight wire. I, mean, I don't think you can call this a cat five cable, whatever, whatever you want to call this. And, uh, that was an easier way for me to get the sheathing off and access the wires that I need and really cut the rest of them just to make it simpler to put that uh, RJ 45 connector on there. So for this device on this cable, the yellow orange were the receive and transmit and the black pin was ground, but you know, every Cable's a little different, could be different color wires, so you'll have to check with that. But once that's done, you can take the USB, plug it back into your um, Solar Assistant Raspberry Pi, and on the uh, app, you'll see that it recognizes that USB, which means you're now ready to plug the new RJ45 connector that you built into the inverter, into the RS-232 port. And as soon as you do it, as I showed earlier, uh, once you hit connect, it's going to immediately be connected. And that was all there was to it. I hope this was useful. If it was, please give me a like.